So, like we had discussed yesterday with the Chicago Blackhawks and Pittsburgh Penguins Rem Pitlick trade, now is the time that we're starting to see a lot of these trades from the past get completely finalized. Because the playoffs are coming and going, because we know which teams are in and out, it gives us some interesting conversations as to what these trade scenarios actually entail. And in particular, we're talking about one of the biggest trades that we had seen last year between the New Jersey Devils and the San Jose Sharks, the Timo Meyer trade from February 26, 2023. Cap Friendly went out there and tweeted this earlier today in regards to the trade. With the New Jersey Devils getting eliminated from playoff contention yesterday, the 2024 second round pick sent to the San Jose Sharks in the Timo Meyer trade will not upgrade to a first round pick. Now, if you wanted to go over to this trade and see why exactly everything is confirmed now, the San Jose Sharks last year, okay, how do we want to do this? We'll say that the San Jose Sharks gave up some stuff first. Okay, no, let's actually go here because it's a little bit easier to do that. Uh, where is it? Okay, here it is. So, the New Jersey Devils acquired themselves Scott Harrington, Timo Meyer at 50% retained, Zachary Amund, Santori Hataka, Timur Ibrahimov, and a 2024 fifth round pick from the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for Andreas Janssen, Fabian Zetterlund, Nikita Okotiuk, Shakir Makamadoulin, a first round pick that was conditional, and a 2024 second round pick that was conditional. Now, this is the condition that we are talking about for the second round pick, the double star right here. Here are the conditions. If New Jersey makes the 2023 Eastern Conference Finals and Meyer plays in 50% of the games, or if New Jersey makes the 2024 Eastern Conference Finals, the pick upgrades to a 2024 first round pick. Now, last year, the Devils did not make the Eastern Conference Finals, so it doesn't really matter if Meyer played in 50% of the games. This year, though, the Devils did not even make the gosh darn postseason, so the fact that this condition was not fulfilled, it leaves the pick that San Jose is receiving in the second round rather than getting upgraded to the New Jersey Devils' first round pick. And that is a pretty good piece of news for New Jersey, because if you take a look at their overall standing in this year's NHL draft race, I mean, the Devils are kind of locked in at that 10th overall spot right now. That could have very well been a San Jose pick if the Devils just went on a run, they went to the playoffs, and they did well enough to make the third round. Now, of course, we recognize that if the Devils made the third round, the pick wouldn't have been over here. It would have been down here in the 29-32 to 32 range. But the Devils didn't go that far, unfortunately. They had themselves a pretty bad season, all things considered, and if they just had better goaltending, who knows how far they could have gotten, especially with the talent that they have in their roster. But Timo Meyer aside, this New Jersey Devils pick is sticking around with them. It is instead the New Jersey second in 2024 that is heading over to San Jose as a result of this trade. This is kind of why it's more interesting to talk about things one year removed, because, hey, the Timo Meyer trade was an absolutely big deal, and you could totally see why. How many assets were swapped around in this trade? Seven players sent over to San Jose and three draft picks in exchange for five players going over to New Jersey and another draft pick. This actually gives us a really good opportunity to talk about each of these assets individually, because if you take a look at the trade one year removed, a lot of the fallout from these players really hasn't shown off too well, because, for example, let's go over to San Jose. First player acquired by the Sharks in this trade was Andreas Janssen, who isn't even on the team anymore. He yeeted off to Sweden, and he's playing for Skellefteå AIK. Now, Andreas Janssen had himself a pretty good resume in Toronto and in New Jersey, but he didn't play much with San Jose. He had 11 games, he had 3 points, didn't come back, and now he's in Sweden, where he's got 16 points in 30 Skellefteå games. Not too much of an impact player, unfortunately, especially since he actually was a pretty significant figure for the Maple Leafs and the Devils. Other players acquired by San Jose in this trade include Fabian Zetterlund, who, to his credit, I'll say he's been a very good pickup for this team. Zetterlund was kind of an underrated monster coming into this season. 20 points, 45 games, even last year he had 3 points in 22 games to close out the Sharks' stint. But this year he has come alive with 21 goals and 41 points in 78 games played. Zetterlund has been 
a beast for San Jose. Him and Mikhail Granlin make such a great duo, it's kind of nuts. And he does everything too. Sure, he's a minus 32, but Zetterlin blocks shots, he takes hits, he gets points as well. I mean, who expected a 20 goal season out of Zetterlin after initially being a third round pick by the Devils in the 2017 draft? He had spent so long developing, and he finally got an opportunity to break out with the San Jose Sharks that this may be like the ultimate win in the trade when you just think about what assets got swapped around. Zetterlin has been so good. Not to mention Nikita Okotiuk, who is still here in Calgary. He got sent over to the Flames in another trade here for a fifth round pick. I mean, in San Jose, he wasn't in the lineup every single night. He would get scratched here and there, but when he was in the lineup, he'd block shots, he'd do what he needed to do. 23 years old, so he's still young, and Okotiuk had 8 points in 43 San Jose Sharks games this season, before, of course, getting traded over to Calgary. But with the Sharks, they had a lot of guys on their blue line that just went out there and tried to block shots and do whatever they could to help their goaltenders out. Mario Ferraro, Kyle Burrows, a lot of these guys weren't really significant point producers, but they could block shots, and that's kind of where Okotiuk's value came in here with San Jose. You could kind of replace him with a fifth round pick because that's what the Sharks ended up flipping Okotiuk for. Shakir Makamadoulin is also a prospect. He's doing well with the San Jose Barracuda. 34 points in 55 games played and a limited sample with the regular San Jose Sharks team where he had an assist in three games played. Michael Madulin's still young, so I definitely think there's more potential here, plus he is 6'4", 190, so if there is a profile for a big Russian defenseman to make his way onto an NHL roster one day, I think San Jose has themselves the opportunity to do that. And then you have yourselves the draft picks here. Quentin Musty went over, was drafted, he's pretty good, and the second round pick from New Jersey will stick around in the second round because the Devils didn't make the third round. Going over to the Devils, though, Scott Harrington was acquired by New Jersey. He is also, like Andreas Janssen, not on the team anymore. He didn't even play. He was flipped over to Anaheim shortly after, and now he's in Switzerland playing for the ZSC Lions. Other names acquired by New Jersey include, of course, Timo Meyer. We'll skip over to him at the end of the video. Zachary Amond is a goaltender in the 12 of their Lions system. Not really the most significant New Jersey Devils player. I mean, his rights were held there, but he didn't really do much. Now he's in the ECHL, not really doing all too well, so not really a big acquisition here for New Jersey in regards to the trade. Same thing could be said about the fifth round pick. Santori Hataka, though, has actually been pretty okay. He was in the Utica, he was playing there, 18 points, 43 games, and had a limited cup of coffee with the Devils once their injury situation started to pile up. Not to mention Timur Ibrahimov, who is still in Utica as well. 13 points, 35 games played, was also in the ECHL for a time. He hasn't really progressed too much at 23 years old, but there still is some time for this six feet left winger to make an impact. Of course, though, the biggest prize out of this trade was none other than Timo Meyer, who went over to the New Jersey Devils and had a little bit of an up and down stint. I mean, 14 points, 21 games played to start out his Devils career, 48 points in 66 games this year on pace for about 50 in a 69 game campaign. Do the math over 82, let's do 50, divided by 69 times a full season. That would have been on pace for about 59 points total, which isn't amazing, like it's not top of the line, 8.8 .8 million dollar caliber, but for what Timo Meyer is and what I think the promise is for Meyer and his potential, there should be a lot more to give than just this point production pace right here. I mean, he was a consistent point per game, 70 point guy with San Jose. He had 52 points in 57 games played last year. So Meyer certainly does have a good enough skill set to be effective. It's just whether or not the New Jersey Devils are the right team to allow him to do that. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, there are some really good point producers on this squad. It's just, can you mesh together in a way that allows each of them to get the best results possible? Maybe if the Devils had better goaltending, it would inspire more hope between this system and they would be able to mesh a little bit better. Who really knows? I always say, like, of course, goaltending doesn't affect your point producers, but if your goaltender plays better and you are more confident in your goaltender, it makes you play better too. We always see this in the NHL, when teams are playing in front of a shaky backup goaltender, it's 
pretty common for them to actually play worse. When they play in front of a star goaltender, then they're a lot more comfortable, at ease, and they're able to make their plays. So we'll see if the Swiss connection of Heeshear and Meyer are able to expand on their talents next season. I mean, you kind of hope they do, right? Because Meyer is signed on till the end of gosh darn 2031. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the trade return details being finalized with this acquisition by the New Jersey Devils and the San Jose Sharks. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this trade and the details behind it. I hope you enjoyed this British Rose 99. And bye.